As anyone who's been in the cryptocurrency game for a while knows, timing is everything. If we're trading the five minute chart, the difference between an entry now and an entry in 10 minutes is the difference between a profit or a loss. When we zoom out and look at the weekly chart or the big picture of Bitcoin, taking action this month versus next month can equally be the difference between closing a successfully profitable trade or regrettably closing out a losing position. With Bitcoin hovering near its all-time high, I thought it was appropriate to make a video distilling some of my knowledge and wisdom that I've learned over my years of trading. In addition to this, Glassnode just put out an excellent guide on how to navigate market tops, and I'll be pulling from some of that as well. Without further ado, here are the signs to watch to identify market tops in Bitcoin and how to avoid buying the top of any cycle. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon too. Welcome to the Cracking Crypto family. First, let's start off by identifying the psychological segments of any market cycle. This handy cheat sheet that many of you have probably seen identifies the feelings most commonly felt by investors and traders during different periods of the market cycle. We will not be focusing on the right-hand side of the chart today, which covers the emotions and psychology of individuals in a bear market. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on the psychology and feelings on the left-hand side of this chart in a bull market. As we can see, these feelings cycle from disbelief, or the feeling that this rally is not going to turn into a bull market, to hope after seeing prices continue to move up, to optimism, which is where genuine belief in the bull market begins, to belief, where serious money begins to enter the market, to thrill as the market soars, and finally into euphoria, where individuals are overcome with a rational exuberance. And this area of the market is what I wanna focus on today. Now, the euphoria phase of the market is almost always at or near the top of any market cycle. And it is here where most fall victim to very fundamental mistakes in their trading. This is where individuals will jack up their use of leverage, this is when individuals will start indiscriminately buying anything that starts coming out, believing that it's going to pump like everything else. And this, most importantly, is when people tend to throw risk management out the window. And unfortunately, this is the worst area of the market to do this in because this is the area of the market where we want to be taking profits and making sure that we now more so than ever are staying true to our fundamentals of risk management and capital preservation. If you are active in the euphoria phase of the market, identifying that you're in the euphoric phase is critical to making the right decisions to lock in your gains and preserve the wealth that you've accumulated throughout the bull market. Now that we've briefly identified the phase of the market where we wanna be selling, let's talk about technical and on-chain data that you can look at to determine if you are or are not in the euphoric phase. Number one. Has the market breached previous all-time highs entering into a phase of price discovery? Whenever the price of any asset breaks out above previous all-time highs, this is often an indication that we are entering into the euphoria phase of the market cycle, as this is pushing price into what we call price discovery, where we no longer have any frame of reference for how high price could potentially go because we've never been this high. In price discovery, we no longer have comfortable trading standbys like resistance lines to gauge where previous market cycles ended or where previous tops formed. And for most traders, we're just simply left out in the dark, hoping and wishing that price just continues to rise. Regardless, breaking above a previous all-time high is a key indication that we might be entering into the euphoria phase of the market and while not generally the right time to sell immediately, is generally when we begin to see increased distribution from long-term holders as they slowly begin to distribute on the way up. Anytime we've broken above a previous all-time high is an optimum time to be taking profits. Again, not all at once, but in small batches as price continues to grow. Remember one of the key adages of successful trading, cut your losers quickly, and let your winners run. Identifying whether or not an asset has broken out above its previous all-time high is very simple to do. All you need is a price chart. For the asset that you're interested in trading, I recommend drawing a horizontal line, as I have, at the previous all-time high, 
And then you just simply look to see if price is above or below that. This one is very simple to verify for yourself. And anytime you're going to be entering into a trade, particularly on a cryptocurrency, I highly recommend that you be very acutely aware of where the all-time high is. Again, breaking above the all-time high generally is what begins or phases us into the euphoria zone of the market, where we see high trading volumes and lots of aggressive buying. As we enter into undiscovered prices for any asset, it heightens euphoria and creates market frenzy. So what should you watch for? Again, this one's simple. Just mark the previous all-time high on the chart, and if price breaks above it, be aware that we're potentially entering into the euphoria phase of the market. Number two, what percentage of supply is held in profit? What percentage of the supply is held in profit? Nowadays, we have access to on-chain metrics from Glassnode or Santimet or other distributors. We have the ability to gauge and see how much of the active supply of a cryptocurrency is actually held in profit. The way this is calculated is by identifying the price at which someone last moved their coins on chain and determining whether or not current price is above or below that price. If the last time that someone's Bitcoin moved on chain, Bitcoin's price was lower than it currently is, we know that that Bitcoin is currently held by that entity in profit. Glassnode has a very useful indicator called percent of supply in profit that we can use to visually see what percentage of the supply is in profit and what percentage is in loss. As we can see, this is a very useful and cyclical indicator, as we can clearly see that when the percentage of supply and profit is very low, down in the green, that tends to indicate a market bottom. And whenever the percentage of supply tends to be above 80 to 90%, that's the red, that generally identifies a local top. As we can see, prolonged periods of being in this 90th percentile, like during the 2017 top, or like during the 2021 top, often indicate that we are certainly in the euphoria phase of the market and almost always correspond to a market top. Why does this happen? Until you sell your Bitcoin or crypto, those gains are just paper gains. They're not real cash. If a high percentage of the supply is held in profit, it means that most investors are sitting on massive unrealized gains. When the majority of the market is sitting on these unrealized paper gains, more and more of them will want to start and convert those gains into real dollar profit and lock that in. This, of course, leads to increased selling pressure and can lead to a spiraling effect that eventually forms a market top and causes a market reversal. We can also use Glassnode metrics like the MVRV or market value to realized value ratio, which measures the actual market capitalization as registered on major exchanges, CoinGecko, CoinMarketCap, the reported market capitalization of Bitcoin versus the actual on-chain market capitalization of Bitcoins based on the price at which they last moved. This is one of the most useful metrics that you should familiarize yourself with when delving into on-chain research. And as we can see, MVRV ratios above 3.5 tend to indicate the euphoria phase of the market. So whether you're checking MVRV or the percentage of supply and profit, this is a metric that you should be checking on a monthly basis, both to identify potential tops and to identify potential buying opportunities. Number three, bearish divergences. Bearish divergences occur when price makes higher highs, but a technical or on-chain metric is making lower highs. We can easily determine this with several indicators that have proved handy for me in the past, including the Relative Strength Index, the Fisher Transform, and even the MACD. For on-chain, I like to look at MVRV or transaction volume or AVIV. So for example, when we're just looking for technical bearish divergences using technical indicators, we can use, again, I have pictured here the Relative Strength Index, the MACD, and I also have my favorite momentum oscillator, the Fisher Transform. Looking at the top of the market back in the 2021 market top, we can see that after the market topped in April of 2021, it of course dipped about 50% and then it rallied back up in October to form a higher high. But if we look at this higher high and we look at the technical indicators, we can see that the relative strength index failed to make a higher high, made a lower high, a clear indication of strong bearish divergence. The same print also printed on the MACD. The same print also occurred on the Fisher Transform. 
If we look at on-chain metrics as well, looking at the MVRV ratio, we can see the same thing occurred on-chain. We can see that the MVRV ratio peaked in April of 2021, and during the subsequent rally, we failed to make a higher high. What is the reason for this? The reason for this is because in the buying frenzy at the local top in April of 2021, we had a lot of new investors come to the scene and purchase Bitcoin at that higher price, which raised the average cost of acquisition up for Bitcoin to a much higher level, which makes it harder for MVRV to rise. Bitcoin's price would have had to go to 90,000 or 100,000 to get such a subsequent spike on the MVRV ratio. Now, Glassnode also has a newer metric called AVIV. You'll find it if you search for true market deviation, which they say is a better representation of MVRV or the actual ratio between the market value to realized value. And as we can see, whether we're looking at AVIV or MVRV, the same occurred. We peaked in 2021, but then failed to make a higher high. Just for reference, here is the regular coin time MVRV ratio. And then another metric that I like to watch for on sentiment is where I like to visualize this is transaction volume. These divergences indicate that momentum is slowing down in the market and are often early warning signs of market tops and potential reversals. Number four, increased distribution from long-term holders. Now, Glassnode and other on-chain analysts separate Bitcoin holders into various cohorts. Those who have held their coins for less than six months are considered short-term holders, while those who have held for more than six months are divided into different cohorts of long-term holders. Now, while short-term holders of any cryptocurrency can often have a strong influence on the short-term direction of price, long-term holder cohorts tend to play a much more pronounced and prolonged effect on longer-term movements, such as large-scale market tops and bottoms. Identifying when these long-term holders or whales are beginning to move their coins, distribute, or take profit can be a key signal to watch for to determine what to do with your bag. If we begin to see a high increase of activity from coins that haven't moved in over a year or longer, it is a sign that long-term holders are beginning to move their coins around on-chain, which is equivalent generally to selling them or preparing to sell them, and we should take note of that. A great indicator to watch for this on Glassnode is the long-term holder spending binary indicator, which you can get with an advanced subscription to Glassnode. Here we can not only see the difference in the cost basis between short-term holders and long-term holders, we can also see when those cost basis change. For example, the yellow line here is the long-term holder cost basis and amount of supply, all right? We can see that as it increases, they are accumulating coins, and unfortunately, as it decreases, it means that they are beginning to distribute those coins. Identifying those periods of long-term holder distribution is critical. This indicator also allows us to see, engage the volume of that distribution or buying activity. This is the histogram or the bars down here on the bottom of the indicator. We can see it's segmented between a red line, which represents the minimal spending amount that they've done historically and also bifurcated by the green line, which is the peak spending amount. So identifying not only when their supply is decreasing, but also when they are achieving peak spending is an indication not only that they are distributing, but also distributing very heavily. Liveliness is also a very good indicator to look at here. This simply lets us know basically to what degree old coins are beginning to move around on chain. As this metric decreases, it indicates accumulation, and as it increases, it indicates distribution. And finally, the 90-day rolling coin days destroyed indicator is also very useful at identifying when old coins are being revived. Uh, when old coins move, that is considered a coin day destroyed, and when old coins sit still, that is considered a coin day created. So if we are seeing a massive increase, in this metric, which corresponds to coin days being destroyed, it means that old coins are beginning to move around on chain. In other words, that long-term holders are beginning to wake up and move their Bitcoin around, generally in anticipation of selling it. In addition to this, Glassnode's report recommends looking at whether this distribution from long-term holders is occurring in line with the HODLer distribution cycle. One way we can visualize this is with the HODL waves indicator on Glassnode where we can actually see these different colored bands increase or decrease. 
And these refer to the different time periods or cohorts, excuse me, of long-term holders. So as we begin to see, for example, the 10-year long cohort increase, it means that more coins are sitting inactive for more than 10 years. As we see the two-year cohort increase, it means that more coin, more coin days are being created, meaning more coins are entering into the two-year cohorts. This is generally a bullish thing, as it means that accumulation is occurring. But when we start to see those two-year and three-year bands decline, and we start to see this HODL wave compress more so, more so toward the bottom of the spectrum, then it is letting us know that those older coins are distributing in line with the HODLer cycle. Again, we want to see if long-term holders are distributing their coins, and if they are, we generally see this occur in the euphoria phase of the market. Two things are happening in the euphoria phase of the market. Long-term holders begin distributing or selling their coins, and newer investors who are caught up in the euphoric rush of increasing prices are rushing to buy as many of them up as they can. The problem, inevitably, is that the new investors run out of capital to continue buying and eventually run out of money. When they do, they are no longer able to support higher and higher prices and the selling pressure from the long-term holder cohorts, which is always much more powerful, eventually overtakes the momentum and begins pushing prices down into a spiral that often cannot be stopped until a market bottom is achieved. In summary, distribution from the HODLer cohort often indicates a top-heavy market that is vulnerable to a correction. Paying attention to the quantity of profit-taking occurring in the market. If the asset that you're trading is experiencing a lot of profit-taking, especially if this is occurring in conjunction with the other metrics that we've just talked about, it is an indication that the market is heating up and probably overheating. When large amounts of profits are taken by many investors at the same time, it creates too much selling pressure that buying demand often cannot support, leading to a significant decline in price. To visualize this, I like to look at metrics like net unrealized profit and loss, the NUPL. This is a metric that I go over many, many times with my subscribers. And this allows us, Glassnow does this for us, it lets us see visual on-chain the different phases of the psychological market cycle from capitulation to euphoria. As we move from capitulation into hope, into optimism, into belief, into greed, this is very handy, the NUPL. Another very handy one, the realized profit or realized profit Z-score, where we can actively see how much profit is being taken in the markets. Obviously, a very high realized profit score indicates a large amount of profit being taken and generally is an indication of the greed or euphoria phase of the market and an indication of a top-heavy market. We can also look at net realized profit and loss denominated in USD. This is a very handy metric. We'll just zoom this in, for example, to the last couple of market cycles. And you can see, of course, that when we are in a bear market, we are registering nothing but unrealized losses. And when we are in a bull market, of course, we have massive amounts of unrealized and realized profit taking. And the last on-chain metric that I'm going to share with you today is, of course, the adjusted SOPR or spent output profit ratio. This looks again at the difference between the price of when a Bitcoin was last moved to when it is now currently being moved. So if it was if the last time it moved, it was at a lower price and now it's being moved at a higher price, that is considered a profit. If the last time it was moved was a higher price and now it's being moved at a lower price, that's considered a loss and we'll bring SOPR down. As we can see here, SOPR oscillates between zero and two with a reading at one, meaning a market, a neutral market, right? There is an equal amount of profit and loss or that Bitcoins are being moved relatively close to the price that they were last purchased at or spent at. Where when we get above one on the SOPR, that indicates that coins are moving uh, in profit relative to when they were last moved. And when we're below one, that indicates that coins are moving at a loss. So identifying when the SOPR gets very high, which as we can see, corresponds to market tops and peaks in the market, is another indication of when we are entering into a top heavy market. In addition to technical and on-chain indicators and metrics to watch for, you can also just pay attention to lots of various things around you as we're in the euphoria phase of the market. For example, pay attention to social media, pay attention to the bias 
of your favorite influencers, of your creators, of the general individuals posting. Look at the comment section. What is the language that people are using? Pay attention to the bias from your friends and your coworkers, your peers, the people that you're hanging out with that are also trading or invested in cryptocurrency. Pay attention to the words that they use. Pay attention to the language that they use. Pay attention to the behaviors that they demonstrate, the trades they seem to take, the posts they seem to make. You can really differentiate the difference between where we're at in the market cycle based on the psychology and the bias of what people are saying. Not just people online, but people you also know if they're invested in the markets. You'll start to see lots of euphoric posts. You'll see lots of bullish posts. You'll start to see the language change from optimistic posts to this bull market's never going to end. I'm going to buy a Lamborghini in a few days. Oh man, if this just keeps up in a few years, I'll be all that kind of language is pretty indicative of the greed or euphoria phase of the market and should be kind of a warning sign to you. Unfortunately, it tends to kind of act like a magnet to most people and amplify the worst base impulses that we have. In addition, pay attention to the frequency of cryptocurrency in news. And more importantly, the frequency of articles or references to cryptocurrencies prices. Um, when there is lots of bullish all-time high, this market's never going to end. This uh, this crypto coin went from zero to a thousand X in over a day, and it could keep going. Articles that sound like that tend to come out in market tops. In addition to this, the frequency of cryptocurrency articles in the news also increases a lot when we're near market tops. Pay attention to the language that these news articles use. Also, in general, just watch for people's psychology, language, and behavior, and keep track of how it changes from month to month as we move through the market cycle. But most importantly, pay attention to your own feelings and behavior. You are the best indicator ever. There's no indicator better than your own intuition and your own sense of yourself. Pay attention to the feelings that you're feeling, the thoughts that you're having. This is why journaling is a critical component of being a successful trader, because successful trading is less about technical analysis and more about emotional self-control and self-awareness. And that is why so many people fail, not because trading is hard, but because knowing thyself and mastering thyself is hard, very hard. If you can keep track of how your feelings, your thoughts, your behaviors, your trades change from week to week, from month to month, you will be able to master yourself and understand exactly where we are in the market cycle. And after you can do that, you can begin to put strategies in place to take advantage or curb your impulses, your intuition, and your feelings. And that is when the game starts to change. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. We will be launching our Crypto Trading Academy in two weeks time, which is my life's work, uh, educating fellow cryptocurrency traders and helping them overcome the pitfalls and problems that I've made myself, that I've seen thousands of other people make, has become my life's work. My team has helped educate thousands of cryptocurrency traders all over the world from various walks of life teaching them how to build their own technical indicator-based, real data-driven strategies and achieve long-term success. We just onboarded all of our current premium members into the Academy for a dry run, and I just posted the first ever exclusive Trading Academy trading signal with a profit potential of nearly 50%. Link is down in the description to get on the wait list. Again, we will be doing giveaways over the next two weeks, giving away free Academy seats, discounted prices, and free one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions with me and my team. So make sure you go click that link if you want to be more involved with our community and really make an improvement in your trading. I am not so different from you guys. I started from the bottom. I grew my account slowly and I did it following the fundamentals of trading. The same thing that I teach every single day, the same thing that I live by every single day. And you guys can too. Just stop focusing on all this fancy stuff and focus on the fundamentals. As always, emotional discipline and risk management are what pay my bills, and I recommend allowing them to pay your bills as well. Trade safely, and I'll see you in the next one.